Howdy y'all, Ray Benson of Asleep at the Wheel here and welcome to the Texas music scene. You know, this time we've got Jack Ingram, Whiskey Myers, and the Wheeler Brothers, so I wouldn't go anywhere if I were you, amigos. Jack Ingram plays tribute to his heroes in front of a live San Marcos, Texas audience with the tune, Higher Than Willie and Jonesin' for Haggard. In this week's Backstage Pass, we get the 411 on Whiskey Myers' latest album, Early Morning Shakes, from the guys themselves. And finally, the Wheeler Brothers plug in and rock out a tune off their album, Gold Boots Glitter, to close this one down. Texas music scene is made possible by the generous support of Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the Texas music scene. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. Go check us out at TexasMusicScene.com. You know, it's not too hard to figure out who Jack Ingram was listening to growing up. Like a lot of good Texas musicians, it comes through in his music. One of his latest additions to his live set is a song that puts it right out there. It's called Higher than Willie and Jones and for Haggard. A man after my own heart. So, there's a song I've been playing for the last couple of years that I actually wrote with uh, John Randall, a guy named Bobby Penson, who's a fantastic songwriter. And if Sam Bush puts together a, a bluegrass band, they call John Randall. That's, he world class. And uh, so, anyway, he and I were sitting around, and I had heard that Keith Richards stayed up all night. <laughs> One of these nights he did it. And when he woke up the next morning, he pushed play on his tape recorder and he'd written, uh, can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> Man, that's a pretty good idea. I'll, I'm gonna give that a, sh a shot. And so I did and woke up the next morning and pushed play and there was just nothing but a hangover. Just <laughs> nothing there. But I hooked up with, with John and, um, and a bottle of Jack Daniels and some cold Bud Light, and my iPod. We, we wrote this song. We started it that night, but we finished it the next morning. But um, I always say it's with my apologies to Rascal Flatts and my uh, gratitude to George Strait and George Jones and Merle Haggard and Willie Nelson. It's called When I'm Higher Than Willie, I'm Jones and for Haggard. I'm gonna send this out to Willie Nelson where he is now. Appropriate when you're higher than Willie. Jones and for half. I'm usually good for a good Friday night. Saturday too, Sunday sometimes we raise a little hell. Good Lord, Willie, find me a bar, find me a drink, find me a girl who ain't trying.
Jones and for Haggard. Something that won't go away. No matter how good some old bad bar band plays, yeah, there's hurt. A joke won't heal. Smoke ain't gonna cut. Quicker than Merle. Hell, that's like trading one pain. One pain for another. Yeah, that whiskey, it gets costly. And cheap women, they ain't cheap. I'd rather stay home. recently joined forces with Americana super producer Dave Cobb for their latest release called Early Morning Shakes. The result was a bigger sound, female backing vocals, and even more dual guitar layered tributes to their home base of East Texas. Here's the band with their story behind the album. Morning Shakes is just basically, I guess that song is pretty truthful, I guess, about hard living on the road, you know, and we've been going 100 miles an hour you know, for a long time, and it was just kind of like that. I just felt like, like riding it, you know. It ended up being a cool title, so we decided to name that the album that. Well, we knew, you know, of Dave Cobb from working with Leroy on the last album, and then we're friends with his um, cousin Brent, who's a songwriter, Brent Cobb. And he wrote um, a couple songs with me on this album, and he wrote uh, Bar Guitar on the last album. And I thought recording at his house made it very uh, laid back for us. It allowed us to be more organic and, you know, ourselves more than Whiskey Myers in the studio. It was just Whiskey Myers, you know, it wasn't forced. You know, so that's it's really it. relaxed, you know, being in somebody's house as, a, as opposed to waking up at 7.30 in the morning, going to the studio, you know. It felt real like you were going to 
a buddy's house to write some songs, yeah. or, you know, come together with some songs. So Lord, help me now. That's a hard road to hold. It sounds a certain way live because of the element that you're in, I think, you know, and, and it's two o'clock in the morning or whatever, and, and you know, you have that energy and stuff, and, and we could never, I think, fully replicate that at eight o'clock in the morning in the studio. I just always really hated that part about recording, and he was real free about, you know, yeah, we worked when we wanted to, and just kind of being in a natural mode and not, not being so, like, sterile and, you know, like, oh, here we go, and then you stop, and then it, this, it was very just free. We used a lot of, uh, he had just tons of vintage gear. Yeah. And old stuff just sounds way better. Like everything we, we played on the album were all just old vintage guitars, old, old amps and microphones and everything. Nothing was, you know, like past like 1970. Like everything was from the 50s and 60s. And it was awesome. We used an old Helios board, which is what Zeppelin and the Stones and all them used. We kind of just put it together, somebody's got an idea, and we start playing and whatever comes out, comes out, you know? And then we'll tackle different directions and spit out ideas, that's how they usually come together. That's how we actually kind of sit down in the, in the production room and kind of just had a base idea of what we're going to do, go in there, and then it, nine times out of ten it changed when we started playing and what we said we were going to try to do anyways. And I, I didn't have a lot of the, the lyrics finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we recorded this album. I was like, damn, I gotta write six songs that are already, you know, basically recorded. That was a pretty nerve wracking experience. Well, sun don't shine, gonna take my time. Hit it back to the holler, gotta make a dime. With some cold, pressure, copper line, gonna make a better living where the sun don't shine. You told me the idea of that song, Where the Sun Don't Shine, is it could be like anything, or three different things, and uh, it's about. I don't know about people not making a good living at a regular job and they have to do something a little bit more dirty and illegal to get by. I don't know if it's really glorifying any decisions or anything like that, more just a addressing their situation, I think. You always kind of want to grow, you know, as a band and as musicians and as songwriters and just the whole package needs to grow and continue to get better. And you hope that from project to project it gets better every time and it kind of evolves with how you evolve as you grow personally. That's something that somebody can carry from this album. Just the difference between it and Firewater is just the amount that we've come since then as individuals and as a band together. It's like ESP, you know? We can speak to each other, you know? We're talking right now. <laughs> Y'all don't even know what's going on. You know, folks, my son Aaron first introduced me to the Wheeler Brothers a few years ago, shortly before my 60th birthday bash in Austin, Texas. I was so impressed that I had them come up and play the party. Now here's their song, Straight and Steady, right here in the Texas music scene. Straight and Steady? That's another one where we kind of collectively round, round worked. Well, you've been singing that for a long time now. I feel like you're working on that guitar part. We'd always see you working on it, just like the old uh, piano song we did. Yeah, but... I, I have this thing where I work on these songs. I'll have like a melody in my head and I'll just keep doing it for like four months and it drives everybody crazy. <laughs> Until it finally clicks, you know? That was the one song that was kind of inspired from like college and I just remember this one dingy bar and just like smoky and then, you know, kind of like making your way through the crowd trying to find the you know your date that you were supposed to meet there or whatever and that's just kind of like the simple idea where it started we uh finally had that had the structure loosely put together with the guitar breakdown in the end and the drum breakdown 
in the harmonies and then we sat around the table and just kind of worked our way through the story. And that's what you hear on the album. Actually, a cool thing about the album is on the outro, I was walking to um, HEB on Altorf. It's always crazy. And there's like a million grackles like all over the place. They make this really cool, like, you know, the grackle noise. And I recorded on our phone, kind of played that into the outro that leads into Heather, which is the next song. So you should check it out. Really, it was cold. Room filled with smoke and I was feeling slow from the night before But I stood straight and steady, mind at ease I was ready for the next move Oh, how you keys, they opened doors Two rooms in named you don't before Not getting better, hold your breath But write you letters from the road And I was feeling slow from the night before But I stood straight and steady My daddy's I was ready for the next move
Today's show was made possible by the generous support of Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the Texas music scene. Go check us out at texasmusicscene.com. And by toursanmarcus.com, live music, river tubing, and outlet shopping. Well, folks, that put this one to bed. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, get out and support Texas music and Texas artists by going to see some live music and spreading the good word. Because as we like to say around here, Texas is not just a state, it's a state of mind. Adios, y'all.